Welcome back. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, quranspeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question is, I know the views of Yetjuj and Matjuj from the Quranic and biblical perspectives, but I haven't found any logical explanation of the wall and yet Yetjuj and Matjuj in the present day world. What are the scholars' logical view regarding this issue? Like where is the wall located? Or which nation is Yetjuj and Matjuj from? Or is it all beyond our understanding? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just to put this in perspective for those viewers who are not Muslims and the one who is Yajuj and Majuj. <laughs> so this is the equivalent of Gog and Magog. But in the Hebrew, the, the jim is pronounced with, it's a hard G. So uh, Gug and Magug, uh, whereas in, in Arabic, it's the soft G, like in George. Hmm. So it's Yajuj and, and Majuj. Mm -hmm. So basically we're talking about the same entities. But uh, there are different details which are mentioned in the Bible and in classical Jewish tradition and Christian tradition and so on. So sticking with what the Quran mentions, there's only a brief mention of this in two places in the, in the Quran. There are a lot more details in the Hadith. And the question that Muslims are struggling with actually have a lot to do with the details which are mentioned in Hadith. Mm. So you have a lot of mythical descriptions in, in Hadith. For example, you have a description like, what do these people look like uh, who are called uh, Yajuj and Majuj? So um, according to one description, their ears are so big uh, that when they're ready to sleep, they sleep on one ear as their, as their cushion and they use the other ear to cover themselves as a blanket. Mm. Um, so one wonders, are these really people? Yeah. And uh, in the Shia tradition, there is uh, an understanding that they're not from Bani Adam, they're not from among the children of Adam. So that's a separate uh, species. Uh, you know. So um, who exactly they are, this has uh, been uh, given rise to a lot of speculation, but a lot of this has to do with the, with the Hadith, especially because the Hadith describe them as being of such a large number so Muslims now become fascinated with finding, like, where can we get such a large number of people such that when the army lines up, the vanguard will be in, in Syria, but the, the, the rear uh, of, the, of this whole um, arrangement will be like in, in uh, Khorasan, you know, far distance away. And when they approach a lake, they'll drink from the lake so that the, by the time, you know, the last of the army gets into to the lake, it's all dried up. Mm. And, and, you know, because all the water is gone from just the drinking of these people. So, uh, but, but if we just go with the Quranic narrative, the bare narrative at 18 chapter of the Quran and the story of Dhul Qarnayn, and then in the 21st chapter of the Quran in the 96th verse, I believe it is, where it says, uh, you know, that when إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَعْجُجُ وَمَعْجُجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ هَدَبِي يَنْسِلُونَ uh, so they will descend from every slope when the opening arises. But what is, what is the opening? It is the Yajuj and Majuj who will be opened um, or, or, or released. But released from where is not exactly stated. In the 18th chapter, Dhul Karnayn, uh, who is said to have built a wall to stave them off. But the details of that wall are very scanty in that surah of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And it's a hadith that says that they're uh, continually trying to bore the wall. Uh, but they give up by the end of the day before completing the project. And then overnight, miraculously, the wall uh, reseals itself. And then, oh, by the grace of God, obviously. And then uh, the next day, they have to start all over from the beginning. So this must have been going on for, you know, a couple of thousand years. Uh, and, and they're not getting the hint that they have to complete the job before going to sleep. So is uh, the hadith similar to the biblical narrative? Uh, no, there are differences. Okay. Uh, the biblical narratives are also very few and scanty. Mm. There, is, uh, there are some references in the Torah, um, where curiously it is said, Gog from Magog, as if, you know, one is the people and the other is the place. Mm. And uh, later on, that comes to be construed as Gog and Magog. And uh, in the book of Ezekiel, there is some more detail, but that's, uh, you know, it's a lot of mystical detail in the book of Ezekiel anyway. And also in the book of Revelation in the Christian uh, New Testament. Um, and so they are shown to be the enemies of Christ. And uh, some of that uh, lives on in, in Islamic depictions as well. When Jesus comes back, he will have to slay his enemies, including the Yajuj and Majuj. But God will take care of them miraculously, so Jesus will be spared the effort. And, uh, but but that, those details are not in the Quran. So all we know from the Quran is that there are some people called Yajuj and Majuj. Um, the the um, Dhul Qarnayn uh, built a dam to stave off uh, their, their advance to protect some people. Uh, but how many are those people and how many survive where they are and which is that wall, the Quran is silent about. So it's best for Muslims 
to also be silent about all of that. We just get the lessons from these stories. Uh, we see that uh, you know there are people who might spread corruption. They have to be retained. Uh, there are good people like Lil Karnayn who believe in God and they, they, they do what is necessary for the protection of unprotected people in the world. All right, thank you for that, Dr. Bear. You're welcome. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, quranspeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to igive at quranspeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.